please watch the video to the very end and then I'll explain why this is a bold move against exploitation and how the movement started. Enjoy. In a world where drivers have long been pushed to their limits, working tirelessly for a mere fraction of the fare, without regard for the wear and tear on their vehicles, comes a turning point. The introduction of driverless vehicles on America's streets has sparked a new threat to their livelihoods. But amidst this turmoil, the chairman and chief evangelist for Fair Co-op, Torsten Kuhnert, known as the Rideshare Professor, stands firm. My name is Torsten Kuhnert. I'm known as the Rideshare Professor to drivers and food delivery drivers around the globe. Hi, brother. In the past three years, we have seen our pay and our safety in our vehicles decline. And a movement was started by myself in December 2023 when I called for the first of five protests globally taking place in three countries, increasing to 20 countries in 2024. We achieved a massive, massive media and social media victory. Now, I'm also the chairman and chief evangelist of FAIR Co-op um, that was formed a few years ago in Canada. I've been recruiting drivers over 50,000 to date around the globe uh, for this cause where 50% um, of the platform is owned by the drivers and 90% of the revenues generated go to the drivers. Let me take you to February the 14th, Valentine's Day. The theme was no love. Why did I choose no love? Because the companies have not shown us a single ounce of love when it comes to increasing our earnings. Quite the opposite. They have the highest take rate. Drivers are frustrated. Drivers are leaving the platforms. They are sick and tired of the abuse. Just look at the pictures from around the globe. The very next one will be on April Fool's Day because we are not fools. We'll send a loud and clear message to those CEOs at their headquarters that we will not be treated like fools, period. Uh, we have a massive network of social media influencers from the gig world commanding YouTube channels, Instagram channels, Facebook rooms, I liaise and talk to them weekly. I work with unions, associations, and organizations around the globe. And when I decide to activate those gig troops, they all come on board because they are sick and tired of the abuse. We urge you to step in and play a big role in FAIR, in the FAIR co-op. I urge every driver and food delivery driver to sign up, download the apps. And um, we have proven in Canada after 50,000 food deliveries how much the restaurants enjoy us, how much the food delivery drivers enjoy us, and how we actually know how to treat people like proper human beings. We are duplicating these efforts starting in the United States, starting in California. Come on board and enjoy the journey. The timing is now. On December 22nd, he announced the Valentine's Day strike, a bold move against exploitation. Overseen and co-founded by Torsten himself, that very day marked the soft launch of Fair Co-op in Los Angeles, a pioneering hybrid corporate slash cooperative rideshare and delivery platform empowering drivers with 50% ownership and 90% of the revenues. What unfolded next was beyond anyone's imagination. Torsten, a steadfast advocate for drivers who has guided over a million drivers with invaluable advice, rallied support from fellow advocates, YouTubers, and association members to amplify the strike's impact. In a show of solidarity, 10 cities announced their participation within a month. Sending a clear message to Uber and its ill, the mistreatment of drivers must end.
crowd gathered here right now, all these drivers, and you know, the group has really grown out here with the Uber and Lyft drivers, and all of them have shut their apps off, and they're all waiting here. They've shut them off during what they say is one of the busiest times. Thousands of Uber and Lyft drivers are ignoring their apps on this Valentine's Day. The demonstration, part of a nationwide strike. Supporters say they have growing safety concerns, and they say they're seeing less money coming in. Gathered here in front of Uber's Green Light Hub off Beverly Boulevard. They call this the National Driver Day of Action, a 44-city attempt to call attention to rideshare companies taking more off the top whenever you pay for a rideshare vehicle. Now, these drivers say wages are the sticking point. They say the platforms Uber and Lyft are taking a big chunk of their fares as the cost of living goes up. Rallies like this planned in at least 17 U.S. cities, including here inside the rideshare lot at Newark's airports in Terminal A. The drivers say they are being forced to work long hours to make ends meet. Uber and Lyft drivers in the Portland area say their pay is going down. As you can see from the chart, there's a big difference all the way from as low as 27% up to 68% that the driver gets paid. I want that equaled out. Craig Bethel has been driving with Lyft and Uber for years now and printed out a chart of his rides in one morning showing how much the passenger paid versus what he pocketed. More than 100 Uber drivers gathered at the Potrero Center lot Wednesday yeah. morning. Drivers say terminations are often abrupt and without explanation or an opportunity to appeal. This is like enslavement. We're being enslaved. By mid-morning, the protesters drove to Uber headquarters. There are about 2,500 Uber drivers here in the Philadelphia area. A small number of them went on strike today, and the ones who did hope it makes a difference. These rideshare drivers expressed little love for Uber and Lyft on this Valentine's Day. About 150 in the Philadelphia area went on strike, refusing to do pickups or drop-offs at the airport. <laughs> Connecticut Uber and Lyft drivers gathered at Bradley International Airport in Windsor Locks Wednesday <laughs> to call for the end of what they say is corporate greed and demand a fair wage. Drivers are backed by groups like the Independent Driver Guild and the Justice for App Workers Coalition, who helped organize the Hartford strike and nine other metropolitan area airport strikes throughout the country. For those wondering where the rideshare drivers were, the answer is here at the rideshare lot on the east side of Tampa International. A walkout, or in this case, drive out for close to two hours today, Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash drivers all wanting higher pay and better working conditions. <laughs> This one-day strike and protest is not only happening here, but right across North America. You can see here at Nathan Phillips Square, a few dozen Uber drivers are gathering, and they're here today to call for better pay. The strike action, uh, you know, is happening on a typically busy night in Toronto. It's Valentine's Day, and this could put a crimp in your plans, whether you're going out or ordering in. Uh, you know, the strike action will also be impacting Uber Eats. The movement swiftly gained momentum, with 45 cities across three countries joining the cause. The outcry resonated worldwide, making headlines and causing a 3% dip in Uber's stock value, compelling them to buy back shares to mitigate the backlash. Witnessing the unity of voices from diverse cities was nothing short of inspiring. Drivers in Los Angeles, San Francisco, Portland, Newark, and Philadelphia inspired by the promise of fair co-op, took to the streets with banners and chants, advocating for fair pay and a sustainable alternative to the impending automation. The movement's crescendo is set for April Fool's Day, with plans for an even larger protest and efforts to expand fair co-op's reach. We are not fools. We'll send a loud and clear message to those CEOs at their headquarters that we will not be treated like fools. Period. This isn't just a call to action. It's a testament to the power of unity and the strength of collective resolve. Your support can make a difference. Join us and be part of a movement that's not just fighting for fair wages, but for the very future of our communities. 
Together, we can forge a path towards a fairer, more inclusive world. So, let me just explain how this all came about. And uh, bear with me uh, Um I've just had my... Uh, my leg surgery and it's definitely not uh, easy being on two crutches that become your substitute legs, right? But um, we're not gonna cry. We're gonna march forward. And uh, I just wanna thank you for watching the video and explain what happened here. When you're up against uh, companies that received billions and billions of dollars in investments from venture capitalists from foreign countries. Uh, they started this movement many years ago, 12, 14 years ago, and they had a lot of money to squander. And part of the game plan was to wipe out taxi organizations, was to wipe out shuttles, it was very well documented. And um, they spent billions of dollars recruiting drivers and growing these rideshare companies rapidly worldwide. So a little bit of history there. But as we moved on through Travis Kalanick to Dara Koshushawi, uh, from Logan Green, John Zimmer to David Risha, uh, you and I know that our pay went one way down. The take rate, what the companies take from that ride affair went through the roof. We're at a point, ladies and gentlemen, I kid you not, we're at a 60% them, 40 us, even many cases, 70% them, 30 us scenario. Now, uh, the reason why I got involved in FAIR, uh, because it is a business model that allows drivers to own 50% of the company. And as the video stated, I signed up over 50,000 drivers to date. I haven't been paid. There's years and years and years of volunteer work. But when you don't have the hundreds of millions of dollars in investments, because you know people really don't want a third alternative. Investors don't want a third alternative to Uber and Lyft. You have to get extremely creative, right? You can't even go out there and get a 20 to $15 million invest, uh, investor because they say, you know what, how are you going to compete with Uber and Lyft? And it's a legitimate question, right? And we have to be truthful. It is very, very hard to compete with Uber and Lyft if you are not getting the investment dollars. So we had a vision, we had a plan that started many, many years ago. And um, I've had hundreds of proposals over the years, right? Help me start this, help me get this off the ground. Hey, I built an app. But the, the team that I believed in most uh, operated out of Canada and showed that after all the years of, of us slugging away, paying out of our own dollars, paying for the uh, programmers, the technicians to bring, and you know, and then you got to build the apps and you got to pay people to do run beta tests. And you got to just keep on slogging away without receiving money, without receiving investment dollars. But the group, had a lot of faith in each other. And I appreciate the team allowing me to be the chairman and chief evangelist of this uh, rideshare co-op, food delivery and rideshare. And we did, um, not only did we register, you know, 50,000 drivers to date, but we've, as I've been told this morning, done about 65,000 food deliveries in Canada, which is the beta testing phase. Now, if you haven't downloaded this app on your iPhone or on your, you know, on your Samsung or whatever it is, uh, go right now, 
download it. It's available on both platforms. Enroll and you can start building your team in your city. We have leaders in the big cities, whether it's Toronto, Vancouver, San Francisco, Houston, Miami, we have leaders. We actually have a lot of people enrolled and we have done this, ladies and gentlemen, with our own dollars. I've put a lot of money into this. Definitely, definitely not anywhere remotely close to what even the smallest investor put into Uber and Lyft. But we put in the hours, we put in the efforts, we paid the programmers. I'd say a good four or five years later, we started way before the pandemic. We're at this point. Now we're at a point where drivers are absolutely, and I think the video reflects this very well, because this is what you, the drivers, this is what you, the ride chain food delivery drivers achieved on February the 14th. This is not about us. We started the movement. You said we will amplify that movement. You own this. It is yours. Your success on this day. Every single one of those people that I pointed to, right, in all those cities were 45 cities, right? You did this. And you got their attention. You got their attention to the point that Uber did a $7 billion buyback on the same day to try and squash the noise, right? It says a lot. Uh, you got David Risha and Dara Koshishawi's attention because both were in interviews the same week and addressed the Valentine's Day strike. In fact, Dara Koshishawi came out saying, we, uh, we need to earn the driver's loyalty. So the movement started by myself in December 2023 with a lot of powerful and amazing people that have joined the movement. Uh, we've assembled a team of about 25 generals. The website is coming out very, very soon. Super excited about it. And we have all these organizations, unions and associations from around the globe saying, hey, we want to be part of the movement. So I hope that through the movement, all of these individual satellite unions, organizations and associations, whether they're in London, whether they're in Cape Town, South Africa, whether they're in Vancouver, Canada, whether they're in New York, whether they're in San Francisco. I hope we all grow together and get more and more people involved because it's this movement that's going to force the companies to the knees. You have to be patient. You have to be focused and you have to be willing to stand and fight for something in your life, right? It doesn't just have to be this, but just generally in life, you have to stand for something. So I'm very passionate about this. My channel has definitely morphed into uh, advocacy for drivers, rideshare drivers and food delivery drivers. It's grown tremendously and I've formed the most amazing relationships along that journey. And I called upon them and then the amazing thing is they all rose to the occasion and stood up and said, you know what, we're in. We're sick and tired of the abuse. We don't see our earnings going up, quite the opposite. They're going straight down. We don't see any safety, all the safety that they promised us. It's people dying daily, getting killed daily, carjackings, murders, stabbings, you name it. And we haven't seen an end to the wrongful deactivations. In fact, uh, one of my companies, Gig Rocket, is signing up more deactivated drivers than ever before that are being thrown under the bus. So seeing this firsthand, receiving hundreds of emails and text messages every single day, reaching out to the Sergio Ovedians of the world, reaching out to the Jeff Watts of the world and other right, you know, amazing YouTubers like Rideshare, Trickster, etc. Um, we, we have the numbers, my friends. Believe in the movement, join the movement, um, whether you switch your app off or you leave it on and you don't take a trip. We have announced those dates. First one was the No Love, February the 14th. The second one, April 1st, We Ain't No Fools. The next one after that, the May Day, May the 1st, very well-known date around the world. Then July the 4th and several will follow. Now, I'm going to quote Sergio Avedian here from the Riot Chair Guy channel, right? They hate media exposure. They hate social media exposure where we 
Millions of gig workers are connecting with the public and connecting with the riders and educating them of what's really going on, right? Riders look at that, they can see that their fares have gone through the roof, but riders don't often know how much you, right? He or she, the driver, is receiving after the trip. They don't know that. So this is an, a movement in educating riders, bringing more voices on board and pushing and pushing for those three big ones. We want higher earnings. We want better safety and we want wrongful deactivations to lose, uh, to end, right? Because if we get wrongfully deactivated, we just lose. We're losing money every single day. So I appreciate how FAIR has um, supported and sponsored this movement. It's a business model that I believe very, very shortly when we get the funding, we can skyrocket this. We just have to show investors, hey, we have the numbers and people are sick and tired of Uber and Lyft and DoorDash and Uber Eats and they want something fresh, they want something new. That's why I put in the hours every single day without any pay, right? So thank you to all the people um, at FAIR, all the drivers that have already registered that have put in the hours, that have recruited others, that have brought in restaurants on board. The restaurants will love us in the United States and the other countries. They absolutely love fair in Canada. Why? Because they're getting a fair handshake, right? They're not getting 30, 40% of that amount taken uh, from them, right? Where they can barely make a profit, profit selling a burger or a sandwich. This is real, my friends, right? So uh, come on board, download the apps. Um, if, if you are a YouTuber, you know, raise your hand, reach out to me, email me or text me. Hey, I want to be a general. I want to be on that website. We can have 25 faces, right? And these 25 faces represent millions and millions of drivers around the globe, not just in the United States. And the reason why we started with three countries, US, Canada, and the UK. And the reason we didn't start off with 10, 20, or 30 countries on the first protest is because we wanted to slowly and gradually grow the movement. So join us on April the 1st, either switch off the apps or keep them on, run those surges up, and then join us on May, join us in July the 4th, right? And um, we, we will force them to bring change. Um, if they are not willing to play ball, at least we'll bring out a third powerful competitor to take them on. And this here, by the way, is owned 50% by drivers, 50% by investors, and the split is 90-10. 90-10, what Travis Kalanick once upon a time paid us out. That's where we're going to go back to. So download the apps and, and thank you for your patience and thank you for staying on board, right? We are gradually step by step getting there. Believe in the movement, believe in the fact that we can have a third legi legitimate player without billions of investment dollars. We're going to make this happen together. I'm not a one man show, my friends. We are millions and millions of soldiers, gig soldiers strong. And when you see the group of generals that uh, join, they will be announced mid-March. You'll understand where you are going. The companies will understand that we are serious, right? So I urge David Risha, Dara Kushashawi, Tony Zhu to reach out, minimize your damages now, right? You can become a friend and a partner versus a slave driver, versus treating drivers like you own the plantations and they're working for you on the streets, bringing in the money. We're going to change that. If they are not willing to change the ways, we will change it for them. I promise you that. So please leave your message below. Uh, share the video. Again, the link to the actual video, um, you know, without my face being in it, if you just want to take the video and you want to tweet it out or X it out, whatever, you know, like x.com, or if you want to put it in Facebook channels, I'm going to put the link in the description below, ladies and gentlemen, right? So that will 
allow you to just grab the link and really push this in social media. Um, this video here just gives you a lot of the background, how it came together, and then, you know, my, uh, my input at the end of the video explaining how this all comes about. But I would greatly appreciate if you just grabbed the link and ran with it, you know, just put it out there and let's, let's, uh, let's get a couple of million views and educate people so that more and more people enroll and that we can eventually take on Uber and Lyft. God bless you all. I appreciate you and leave your comments below. Thank you.